It's as if June 1983 is a dead end for her. Worse. There's no randomness to it. It's guaranteed to happen. In other words, it's the same pattern as the deaths of Jiro Tomitake and Mio Takano. It's following the exact same rule. Rule Y. Tomitake Jiro and Takano Mio are always murdered on the night of Watanagashi. Furude Rike's death is not always the same, but she's always dead by the middle of June. Jiro Tomitake and Mio Takano were probably attacked on their way home, so that's why it always happens on the same night. But for Rika Furude, it's different. She takes different actions in every world, and her lifestyle is very unpredictable. For that reason, the day of her death is not always the same. However, she always dies in June, because a similar powerful conviction vows to kill her too. So can we assume that the same rule why killing them is also the rule behind her death? Is the same person killing all three of them? I don't know if it's the same person, but it's highly likely the same rule is at work. Is it the same person, or the same organization? Is it the same views? The same goals? Rika's most important goal is to escape her deadly fate. But it doesn't mean that she just wants to leave the village and survive. She wants to live happily in the village. All of her friends must also be happy too. That's Rika's happy future. The ideal future she hopes for. It's tragic that we can't realize such a simple desire, no matter how many times we repeat this. Though it's a tragedy we're only able to perceive because we're beings capable of comparing the fragments from different worlds. By the way, I have some interesting information. While Rika is almost always killed by Rule Y, have you noticed that she's killed by Rule X in some worlds? Right. It happened in the Watanagashi and the Mikashi chapters. Rika Furude committed suicide, but you can say she was more or less killed by Rule X via Shia and Sonazaki in those worlds. In other words, this is a blunder for Rule Y. Rule Y is trying to kill Rika with a strong desire to achieve some aim. But she was killed before that, as a result of the unrelated Rule X that might have caused them to show some... disturbance. If Rule Y's objective is simply to bury Rika, then that's not a problem. But if they have some objective beyond that, then... that might show up as some other phenomenon. Perhaps the Watanagashi and Miyakashi chapters have something in common. Something that doesn't happen in the other worlds. Unfortunately, we're Rika Furude, so we don't know what happens after Rika is dead. Or, by any chance, do you know what happened? Since I'm Rika Furude, I only know of events during Rika's life. You, on the other hand, are a special existence who was born in a superior world. Is there anything that didn't happen in the Watanagashi and Miyakashi chapters? that happened in all the other worlds after Rika's death. If you know anything, then that must be another truth behind Rule Y. The memories I have here are all mainly about the chaos brought about by Rika's friends, that is, Rule X. But its foundation, Rule Z, and the obvious hostility common among all worlds, Rule Y are what I believe to be the true rules governing the stage. If so, then Rika's path is a thorny one. She needs to fight Rule Y in order to survive. Unless she defeats it, she has no future past June 1983. And to win her own happiness, she must also beat Rule X to win her friend's safety. So long as that's undefeated, one of Rika's precious friends may be led to tragedy. If that happens, then even should Rika survive, she wouldn't have the happy future she hopes for. 
she also may have to defeat Rule Z, just as Sonazaki Shion faced it in Mikashi. So long as Rule Z remains, then even if she escapes in 1983, it's possible another tragedy may lie waiting in 1984. It's extremely likely that Rule Z is the breeding ground for Rule X. All these different rules are getting kind of squished in my head here. Hinamizawa's fundamental belief that the Sonazaki family is behind everything, and the custom that anything can be misconstrued as the curse may indirectly be the root of all evil here. People are not surprised to see someone die in the night of the Watanagashi. That type of thinking is keeping the curse alive in Hinamizawa, where it causes even more tragedy. It's Rule Z reinforcing itself. Rules X, Y, and Z. There are three rules that hunt Rika down in the eternal June of 1983. They're all tough obstacles. We didn't even figure out these three common rules until recently. Were you aware of them? If you were, I'll give you straight A's. I've tried so hard in the past to break these rules, but I was never successful. However, a miracle happened in the Sumi Horobashi chapter. Keiichi Maibara was able to recognize a small fragment from another world by chance, and he beat Rule X. In the end, Rika was still killed on that night by Rule Y, though. But still, one rule was defeated. That was a huge leap forward. Rika knew there were three common rules among the worlds, but she could never break any of them. Eventually, she gave up and lost interest in the worlds. That's how I was born. However, she's different now. She learned something valuable from Keiichi Maibara. That the rules can be broken with a strong enough will to fight. If she can break all three rules, Rika Furude will be freed from her eternal prison. She doesn't have much time left, though. Rika has traveled through many worlds. Her physical lifespan is not a problem, but her mental lifespan is getting shorter. Mentally, she's extremely old, and her soul is starting to turn into something different. In the end, she'll probably lose the ability to experience singular worlds. She's already showing their signs, and eventually her memories from the parallel worlds will mix together, ultimately causing her derangement and the loss of Rika Furude's soul. Then she will disappear. That means that you and I are going to be left in this dark world. The fragments of our memories will gradually disappear, and we will be left alone in this eternal darkness. Eventually, we will die. Rika Frude is aware of that. She knows that her mental lifespan is getting shorter and shorter. Hanyu, Hanyu? Was also losing her powers. She can't rewind through years of time like she used to. Her powers decrease so much that she can barely rewind one month of time. Actually, she can only rewind a few weeks. In the next world, she should only have about two weeks of time. Rika Frude is going to try and break all three rules in just those two weeks. I wanted to know what's outside the well, so I tried to claw my way up from there. I wanted to know what's outside the well, so I continued to climb even when I fell and injured myself. I finally realized the higher I climb, the more pain I feel when I fall. My curiosity towards the world and my physical pain became equal. I finally understood the meaning of the frog in the well. It said, uh, it was, uh, Burn Castell. Again. Whew, that was a lot of talking. Not only was that about 40 minutes of talking, but I did about 20 to 25 minutes of talking before that when I realized that the video wasn't recording.
I guess we still got a bit more. I was kind of hoping we're getting to the end, or at least I'm hoping we get to the end of the point where I have to do all the talking. I felt no gravity in the darkness and lost all my senses as a result. I banged my head on the floor with a dull thud. Seeing stars behind my eyelids, I curled into a ball while holding my head in pain. Oh, thank you. I think I need to adjust those audio settings slightly. I may have gone a little too much in both directions on that. Let's try that. I had no idea why I was in this situation, but as soon as I heard their voices from the top of the cliff, I realized I must have fallen. Are we Rika now? Ah, I remember. I was playing behind the shrine with the rest of the club members. I got too excited and started doing something very dangerous. Then the tree branch broke. That's how I fell off the cliff. My body started to ache all over. I remember how I fell, but I still felt strange for some reason. I couldn't remember what I was doing. No, it was more that I couldn't remember who Rika Furude was before I fell off the cliff. I heard Hanyu's panic... Who's Hanyu? Panic voice. Who the heck are you? I looked behind me and saw Hanyu standing there with a scared look on her face. Hanyu. Hanyu. I don't know if I like Hanyu here. I always ask this question first when something like this happens. She finally realized that I was asking the same old question. それしか猶予がないってわけ。僕たちの力もこれが精一杯なのです。Henry muttered regretfully. It was the middle of June, 1983. If this really was the best she could do, I had no choice. I couldn't complain. I gradually started to remember more things. 私がまた昭和58年の6月にいるということは、また私は殺されたのか。After Rena surrendered to the police, all the classmates were given checkups at the clinic. I didn't get hurt, so I was sent back home after they determined I had no injuries.
my memory started getting vague from that point on. A common characteristic of my violent deaths. When my life is taken away violently, the memory before death becomes vague with static. It's like a violently ripped out, ripped roll of toilet paper. That example should make it easy to understand, even if it's uncouth. That's why I have no clear memory of what happened and how I died that night. I only have vague memories. I think someone covered my mouth with a handkerchief or something and I passed out. That's about the only thing that I remember, and only vaguely. I'm not even sure if it really happened. The only thing I know for sure is that I was attacked on my way home or possibly after I got there, and that I was murdered suddenly. I don't know who killed me or how I was killed. I'm glad that at least I don't remember the horrific ending to my life every time it happens. Because of my experiences, I think I now understand why ghosts wander around this world, not knowing that they died so suddenly. If it's a death from a long-lasting illness, people tend to remember that they were sick. They can kind of assume that they died after being sick for a long time. But when your memory is violently disrupted like mine, it can get quite confusing. When I first experienced this, I wasn't sure if I was dreaming or not. I even thought that I hit my head hard and lost my memory. I needed to organize things before I get too confused. My name is Rika Furude. People look at me in a special way, but that's not a big deal for me. All I want is a happy life where I can play around with my best friends. I can't remember how long I've been living just for the sake of obtaining that simple happiness. This panic girl here is named Hanyu. I'm the only one who can see her. Perhaps she only exists inside of my head? At any rate, Hanyu's invisible and can generally only interact with me. It'll be a long story if I try to explain Hanyu's existence, so I won't be doing that right now. Besides, I don't even know how I should talk about her. She's been there since I was born, and her existence is a natural thing for me. I saw everyone running up the gravel road towards me. They're my important and lovable best friends. Our group's active, boisterous, and we get serious about doing stupid things. I'm never bored when I'm around them, and I love them very much. I think all I got was a bump at least. My injury wasn't as serious as everyone thought. It's gonna be weird looking at Keiichi all the time, I think. レナもそれがいいと思うな。どうしよう。監督を呼んでくる。そうだね。近くの家で電話を借りて監督を呼んでみるよ。そこまでしなくても大丈夫なのですよ。この通り、ピンピンしてますのです。ニパー。ダメです
wearing a calm expression. I wouldn't feel anything special about his words if this was a while ago. But at that moment when Rena took over the classroom, when she hurt Mion, Keichi tried his best to save Rena, even so. He was more reliable than I ever imagined from his normal behavior. He's usually an insensitive guy who hurts other people's feelings without noticing, but that's not his true self. He has a secret side. He's willing to sacrifice himself for other people. I was just observing that not too long ago. That's why I can honestly feel his generosity now. Now that I think about it, Keiichi regained a memory from another world the previous time around. Is it possible that he carries that memory in this world too? If that's the case, I have some hope. Hanyu and I are totally powerless. Hanyu is only like heir to everyone but me, and I'm just a little girl. There's only so much that we can do ourselves. But Keiichi is different. He changed the fate that I had once resigned myself to. He's somebody who may have the power to take me to my unseen future. If I can get Keiichi to understand me, he could be my hero. Perhaps I'm actually not expecting that much out of him. I just want someone to understand my struggle of being stuck in this maze. Keiichi? I spoke to him slowly. It had been a while since I felt so nervous. I hadn't felt this way since I started my endless life in 1983. As a witch, I normally would know what his response would be before even talking to him. I often remained silent, because I already know how pitiful the reply would be. But in that case, why was I so nervous now? Oh, Hanyu gave me a disappointed look before I responded to Keiichi. Rika. I could tell what Hanyu was thinking too. The miracle wasn't going to happen. If miracles do happen, one could have happened many times in my other lives. But I've only seen one miracle before. The miracle that Keiichi gave me was a once in a lifetime kind of miracle. Only if it happened again would it be a true miracle. I won't get out of this world just because I rolled six on the die once. I can't get out unless I get a miracle that's equivalent to getting six on the die ten times in a row. And so, I rolled ten die wishing that they'd all turn out to be six. He looked at me worriedly after I called his name twice. I knew how sudden my question was. As I thought he would, he looked at me with a confused face. Eh? I looked inside his eyes to see his true feelings. He should remember. He should know. Even though he doesn't have the memory, Keiichi experienced it. なんですの、ケイチさん。何か理科に悪いことでもしたんじゃありませんの自分の胸によく聞いてごらんなさいですわよ。ケイチ、学校の屋根の上に登ったことを覚えていますですか学校の屋根 it's not for you to answer, Satoko. Oboeteimasen?俺が屋根の上にいつ。いやリカちゃん、それは多分他の誰かの勘違いだろ。俺屋根なんか登ったことないし、登り方だって知らないよ。Of course you haven't experienced it in this world yet. But please, tell me that you remember. 
I know you've never been up on the roof, but you should still remember doing it. You shouldn't be able to remember it, true, but you actually did once. You should be able to remember it once again. いや、<笑><笑> Shut up. I knew that. I knew that he wouldn't remember. As they stared at her fiercely, Hanya realized that she had crossed a line. This might be a waste of time. The maze we're in might not have an exit. It might be an endless loop without a goal in place. We're trapped in this fate. I thought that Keiichi might be able to get me out of here. But that Keiichi I saw was... Truly a miracle. A momentary glimmer. The Keiichi of this world doesn't bear that same miracle. All the same, I'm not going to give up. Last time, too, I gave up on fighting Destiny. I realized Rina was beyond salvation, so I bid her farewell and forsook that world. But Keiichi fought and broke the cycle of fate. I should have worked harder with that Keiichi in that world. I could have broken this endless cycle together with him. Am I going to repeat this life, waiting for that miracle to happen again? I can't do that. I don't want to repeat the same life anymore. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of this world, my fate, and everything. I'm tired of getting murdered by destiny. Keiichi showed me a miracle. I should be able to do the same, too. I must fight. I must fight with all my remaining power. I was always fighting. I was fighting when I had more power. But I never made it. How can I expect to win this time? Still, I must fight. Keiichi taught me that fate can be shattered. I'm going to fight one more time. I sure hope you know what you're doing, because I don't even know where to start here. Alright, new tip to my granddaughter. I'm sorry for leaving you like this. I just need you to understand I'd rather take my own life than be fearful of how many days I have left to live. That's why I'm writing this letter to you. I can't stand the fear of being unable to leave behind a will while my life is prolonged, even as I lose my consciousness. In the end, there's nothing I can leave behind for you. I was unable to leave any of my achievements to this world. I was forgotten before I was dead. I leave this world a humiliated man, knowing that I had no appreciation from anyone. You must do better than me. You must achieve something that your grandfather will or was never able to achieve. I don't mind what field you chose. You must leave your mark on this world. You must leave behind your achievements. You will eventually die someday. You will eventually turn to ashes. As a human being, that's your inevitable fate. I was getting a little deep here, I don't know about this. But if you achieve a great success, you will live forever even after you depart. Those who live beyond their deaths are called gods. I wish to become one, but I was unable to do so. So in my place you must become a god someday.
So I don't exactly know who that's from, or to. Maybe it's to Rinna because, you know, the story so far is about Rinna, or, uh, Rika? Yes, Rika, sorry. But, uh, I don't really know. The fact that he's asking her to become a god, though, is kind of interesting. Maybe that has something to do with it? I don't know. I'm officially tired of talking. And I would like to stop talking. So, <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time for some more Higurashi. Bye.